Most nights, I feel very lucky to have this job. I get to talk about how I see the world, and my colleagues and I try to make some very complex things make sense. But this is a very difficult night for me, for all of us, together. Because just a few hours ago, another horrific video of police appearing to kill an unarmed black man was released, this time from the Memphis Police Department. It is a terrible example of awful police behavior resulting in the death of a human being, a human whose life is now defined by the brutality he suffered. We are not going to show you that video since it's been out there for four hours. You can make your own decision about watching it. That's what the internet is for. So you will not see that video this hour, but you will see us trying to get the best answers we can to the questions we all have. Here's what we know right now. 29-year-old Tyree Nichols was pulled over by Memphis police on January 7th for what they said was reckless driving. He died three days later. Let me repeat, he died after a traffic stop. Memphis police have now released the horrific videos of police officers beating and kicking him while this man called out for his mother who lived not far from where all of this happened. Today we heard from the Memphis police chief. She said thus far there is no evidence to back up why Mr. Nichols was pulled over to begin with. We have not been able to substantiate the cause of the stop, the, the violation. The only thing that we have right now is um, the officer saying that Mr. Nichols was driving recklessly. The five officers involved have been fired and were indicted on several criminal charges, including murder. Tonight in Memphis and in cities across the nation, there are peaceful protests and rallies underway. Americans calling for justice and for accountability for Tyree Nichols. Let's get straight to my colleague, Antonia Hilton, live in Memphis. Antonia, you have been in that city for days. Take us there tonight. Stephanie, the mood here has been really heavy all day, uh, but it's been tense all week as people prepared themselves for what we've seen this evening. You know, so much of our reporting prepared us for some of the worst moments of this. For example, the fact that we wouldn't see any evidence of a crime, never mind a driving infraction committed by Tyree Nichols, that we would likely see a delay in care. I have to tell you, for people who may decide to watch the video, the delay in care that you see feels like it stretches on forever and ever. You know, minutes go by as additional people arrive on the scene and he's slumped up against a car, clearly in agony, and it seems like no one is planning to do anything. There does not seem to be any urgency to get him medical assistance, despite the brutality that's occurred just minutes before. And seeing that is heartbreaking. You know, I, I got the chance to stop by the bridge where the protesters have gathered here in Memphis tonight. And it's actually really solemn. Um, you know, people spent days preparing for the worst, worried that Memphis would burn down. And people really just wanted to be with each other, to talk, to essentially be in communion, to have support, to process this. People were kind of huddled in small groups, watching the video together and trying to wrap their minds around how a traffic stop, a, a traffic violation, if one even occurred, becomes an execution. And um, I think it reminded me of, of a conversation I actually had with the Shelby County mayor this morning when I asked him about, you know, all the concerns you all have had about the protests, about what, how the city might respond. He's a black man who has himself had experiences with the police. And he said that he trusted, that he had respect for the city of Memphis, for the people who live here. He knew that they were going to grieve in a way that would be, you know, what this incident called for, what it deserved. And a lot of what he imagined was going to happen tonight is exactly what we saw, people really supporting each other. I think what you'll see next, Stephanie, is a, a deeper look at, a call for a deeper understanding of this unit these five officers were in, the Scorpion unit. Uh, they're supposed to be this elite squad working on important crime reduction strategies. They're not supposed to be doing beat cop stuff, you know, driving infractions being 
sort of, in a way, underneath the kind of work those sorts of officers are supposed to be doing. So I think you're going to see calls for accountability and more information about the culture of policing in this department, about what really may have led up to, you know, what prior history these officers may or may not have had. And I think this city is going to be in an interesting position because, you know, as a reporter who's been here, it's been great, the level of transparency, the number of officials willing to sit down with me and all my colleagues and peers who've been here. Uh, they've set a new level of standard, but when you set that new standard, it means everyone will notice if you try to repeat to the way business has been done before, um, where people are begging for answers, they're waiting months for video. That's thankfully not what happened to this community in this case, but they're going to have more questions, and I think they're going to want to see people like Chief Davis and MPD, um, the mayor. They're going to want to see people, the DA, come forward and, and answer the further questions they're going to have about how this ever possibly could have happened. Because when you start this video, it goes from zero to 100 essentially immediately. Um, and so if anyone watching tonight plans to watch some of this footage on their own, you know, I'll, I'll warn you it very quickly becomes something that's really difficult to process. And so while this community is sort of all about support tonight, I think we're going to hear a lot of calls for accountability. They're going to want to know a lot more about these five officers and what possibly could have led us to this moment. Stephanie. Go back to transparency for us, because the first statement that the Memphis PD put out, they said that, that he potentially had some shortness of breath. And that's the same thing we heard in the early reports after George Floyd's death. But when you watch that video, there was no shortness of breath. There was a man being brutally beaten. You hear complete agony. That was really some of the hardest moments for me, just to hear the wailing, the moaning, him calling for his mom, who was not very far away, but had no idea that this was happening to her son. Uh, you see not just the five sort of central officers, but you see other people arrive on the scene. And despite the fact that his agony is visible from, you know, we have multiple angle, camera angles on it, no matter which one you choose, you can see it. Um, and so you can sense that the people on the ground must see what we can see, and yet they're not taking immediate action. What we do know tonight, though, um, a new development, is that the Shelby County um, Sheriff's Department has put two deputies on leave as they investigate. Um, and this is in connection to the delays, to the treatment, to the aid that they're worried he should have received in those moments. And so, you know, this is what I'm talking about when we say the transparency. The community is grateful for that quick action on the part of, you know, the county, these officers being immediately fired, the serious uh, felony charges they're now facing. But none of it, none of it is making what you ultimately see in that video make any more sense. And that's the real trouble here. Antonia, thank you so much. You have been out there reporting for about the last 15 hours, and you certainly deserve a good night's sleep. Thank you for staying up for us.